Uh, no, there are no Americans for whom tonight's remarks were of greater uh, stakes than the 8,500 American military families who have a loved one serving in Afghanistan. The, the, the troop numbers in Afghanistan have gone as high as 100,000 American soldiers uh, serving there in uh, the, the first term of the Obama administration. It's down now down to about 8,500. We were told in advance of tonight's speech to expect that the president might be green lighting, although not explicitly talking about a small increase in troop numbers. We know that General Nicholson, who's the American commanding general in Afghanistan, uh, had expressed a preference to have a few more thousand U.S. troops to work with. Um, nothing like that was actually spelled out tonight. I'm not quite sure uh, that we got any direct explanation from the president about anything specifically that is going to change other than uh, calling it a new strategy. That said, sometimes the Pentagon knows um, what they're listening for in a way that, that, that we laymen don't. Joining us now from the Pentagon is Courtney Kuby, NBC News national security and military reporter. She's been covering the Pentagon uh, for more than a dozen years. She's been to Afghanistan more than, more than two dozen times. Uh, Courtney, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Rachel. So I'm um, gle gleaning what I can from the president's words, from his tone, from the shift this represents, from his earlier very clear stance that the war in Afghanistan should be ended immediately. Uh, within the Pentagon, at the Defense Department, is, is there a clearer sense of what has changed tonight or what the president was directing? So there were a couple of, of small things that he mentioned that show a, a path forward for the military. Let me just start by saying there is not some dramatic change in the war in Afghanistan based on the speech that he gave tonight, but a couple of minor things. One was when he talked about expanding authorities for targeting terrorists and criminal networks in Afghanistan. To me, what that sounds like is he's giving the authority for the U.S. military to start targeting, offensively targeting the Taliban again. You'll remember that in, in 2014, the, the quote-unquote combat mission in Afghanistan ended in a train, it, it turned over to a train advised assist mission for the Afghan military. This sounds like, he didn't spell it out explicitly, but it sounds like President Trump is saying that once again, the U.S. military will have the authority to target the Taliban. They, they also, the military right now is, they have the ability to target Al-Qaeda, ISIS, some Haqqani networks. They always have the inherent right of self-defense, of self -defense, of course, but it sounds like this is a new authority that he's granting. He also said Quote, that the Courtney, U.S. Courtney, before you get to the second point, can I just ask a clarifying sure. question there? One of the things that we've noticed is that the, the president, even before tonight, has talked about devolving decision-making authority on key matters. Like when there was the, the gigantic so-called mother of all bombs that they dropped in eastern Afghanistan in that second week of April, one of the key reporting moments there was when we learned that it was General Nicholson in Afghanistan that ordered that. It was nothing that went up the chain either through the Secretary of Defense or the president. A very dramatic decision there. We've also been told that the sort of the the, the I don't know if it's expl explicitly the rules of engagement, but the the terms on which U.S. forces are engaging uh, in combat in Afghanistan and in other battlefields have already been loosened from from what was happening in the Obama administration. So is this the president just describing something tonight that's already been in effect for months? No. Well, yes and no. So, I mean, and you heard him say tonight that we can't micromanage a war from Washington, that wars are fought in the battlefield and they're managed in the battlefield. So back in June, Secre uh, President Trump gave Secretary Mattis the authority to deploy forces to Afghanistan right. without going to the White House and requesting that's, that any special permission. Secretary Mattis has had that authority for more than two months now. What I find particularly interesting is that he has not used it. General Nicholson, back in February, and actually last fall, he started talking pretty openly about the fact that he needs several thousand more U.S. troops in Afghanistan to fight the war there to, to continue, continue with the mission. Secretary Mattis very, made a very concerted effort and decision not to deploy those additional troops when he had that authority in June. He wanted this to be President Trump's strategy. President Trump, Trump with this announcement, with this speech tonight, owns this war. Hmm. This is now his strategy that the U.S. military will be implementing. Right when the speech ended, ended uh, Secretary Mattis put out a written statement where he talked about how he has now directed General Dunford, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, to implement this new strategy. So President Trump has really been running this war like a CEO. He's delegating things out to his, his commanders or to his, you know, his presidents or vice presidents underneath him. Secretary Mattis made a very specific decision here and said, no, I will not send troops into harm's way unless I'm doing it under your strategy, President Trump. And now he's made that strategy explicit. 
um, which I, I guess from the perspective of the military lines things up so that they feel that they can carry out these authorities that were already delegated to them. Um, I guess in that sense, it's sort of a, a reassertion of the, the, the chain of command and civilian control of the military, even if they had to kind of push them out there to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. And then there's just one other thing you mentioned Please. earlier is, is just this uh, no timeline for withdrawal. That this, But he also made it very clear, President Trump, uh, that uh, this is not an open-ended commitment. And he talked about how the U.S. is going to need to see uh, real reforms and real results from the Afghan government in order to stay there. That's something that, uh, that's the language that we're not accustomed to hear, accustomed to hearing. You know, the, there's the Afghan government, it, it has its problems. It has problems with corruption. The military has its problems. But that is a very specific I, I don't want to use the word threat, but that is a, a very, some very specific language that we're not really accustomed to hearing from, from the, um, the American government against the Afghans. Courtney Kuby, NBC News national security and military reporter, joining us tonight from the Pentagon. Courtney, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. I want to hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.